Every day, fishermen from the far northeast of Scotland leave port for some of the cruelest seas in the world. Theirs is the most dangerous job in Britain. Now, in Trollerman, a new generation of fishermen are about to make their mark, braving violent storms and deadly conditions. All to put fish on our plates. miles west of Scotland, far into the Atlantic Ocean, the Arcane is searching for large haddock. The boat is in massive debt, but skipper Charlie McBride hopes that a 250 mile steam out of her usual fishing grounds will bring a change in fortune. Let's jump on you, think. Nothing better, nothing gained than a fair heart, never won a fair lady. Charlie's gamble appears to pay off. The first haul of the new location produces a bag full of fish. But there's a problem. Just a lot of cod now. We don't want to see cod. Scientists say that cod stocks are close to collapse. Consequently, a quota system restricts fishermen to landing only a certain percentage of cod within each catch. Any cod caught beyond the quota has to be discarded. Look at that there. Is there any sense that we haven't enough quota for cod, so we've got a, a cod there. Yeah, there's a no-no. And we've got to chuck it back over the side. There you go. Bye-bye. They put it back over and they got surely that's tomorrow. But they came in the birds illegal. We don't want to catch the cod, but you just can't help catch the cod. You can't stick a sign on the net saying, no cod, please. Because you, if the fish are on the ground, you're going to catch it. And it gets worse every year because the cod stocks is building up. There's more cod on the ground, yet the quotas isn't coming up quick enough. So every year there's more cod being dumped. Last year, the McBrides were prosecuted for landing and selling fish rather than throwing them back. Absolutely diabolical, absolutely no overcast in it whatsoever. Now, if they can't repay 400,000 pounds, they face jail. Every fish the McBrides throw away just adds to their debts. We're going to have to steam somewhere else now for tomorrow's morning to keep the other caught. Fish. We're out here to catch fish, and then when you find fish, you got to run away from it. 400 miles away from the Arcane, on the other side of the North Sea, there's a pair of hunters at work. Last year, this team, towing one massive net between them, caught nearly two million pounds worth of fish. The sunrise is skippered by John Stephen. Our fishing partner is the Ocean Dawn, skippered by Ian Ritchie, a veteran of over 35 years at sea. Here! Three works! Me and Ian have been fishing together for six, no, six years. We just get on great, the crews get on great, so it's a good partnership. Night times out at day and we're both thinking exactly the same. That's why we're going well. All the gear expenses split between the two boats. It's a 50-50 partnership with everything. The Sunrise is shooting a brand new 20,000 pound net. He's going to have to catch a lot of fish to pay for it. In charge of the new net is John Stevens' son, John Jr. Stay there, throw a roller. Watch out! Robert, this metal just can't control, just leave it! That's a new net been shot for the first time, so hopefully it'll come up in a good haul. Hopefully it'll come up in one piece. A new net's away, aye. So we'll see how she performs. A quarter of a mile apart, the pair team tow one huge net. Its mouth is 200 feet across. After 
five hours they haul for the first time. That's a new net. It's an Angus fishing net. Net. Rubbish. What even cover the fuel for the oil? Nothing. Zilch. Cold daddy. Something here, actually. I was just not getting up. Just the thing here. I'll hate to try things near you. I can't just go and scrub a thing. I can't just scrub, I'll just spunk in. Shit, try, huh? Different thingies, huh? You're in my head, Dave. Get back and move me different thingies. Get in there, get in I'll try it back. It's not your own fault. It's a brand new night. Right down from the fog, right? You know what I mean? It's a bit of fish in a goldfish bowl. Very poor hole. It is. But I must say, we're looking at 15 boxes. This fish room will hold a 900 boxes. That's 15 down, 885 to go. The arcane has the opposite problem. Too many fish, but of the wrong sort. Charlie McBride has steamed overnight to new fishing grounds to find the haddock. The cod are dying in the hopper. The fishermen find themselves frantically trying to save the lives of the fish they've just caught. Some of them are still alive. Most, most of them are dead. We're just trying to, trying to save the old one. Make me alive. Get them out of the hopper. Get them out as much as you can. There's over half a ton in that hull, a cod that we had a dumb every one. It's uh, so destroyed, it's absolutely so destroyed. It was absolutely mad, it's about. There's 12 bucks of cod in that hull, it's about a thousand pounds of a fish that were thrown over the side. Hard enough to get 11, never mind 20, money was real. Pressure is building on Skipper Charlie. The Arcane has been at sea for five days, burning fuel and catching the wrong sort of fish. Okay, okay. So over here, so over the shoulder. Why, Al? What's wrong? Is it the hot man on? It's not that far out, right, Stephen. What's wrong? Yeah. Well, if things go wrong like that last hole, they can get stressed out very quickly. Why? Different people handle pressure in different ways. Well, we try and let him not let it go to me, but he, he goes all the way and he gets them. What way? He blows it off and then he gets on with it. Who's better doing that way than somebody bottling it up too long? Every fisherman's under pressure, but I think we're under just a bit more than most. On the pair trawlers, John Stephen is also feeling the pressure. He's got a new net. With no fish. It's that section I was sticking off. What's that deal, In an effort to get a fishing right, they're making adjustments to the mesh. Try that again, boys. Just leave it. What section? No, I know. The double blue. Just let us do it. No matter what the one says. Different generations of fishermen handle stress in different ways. My father lets it get in a bit too much. He takes stuff a bit past off too much sometimes it is. Yeah, I don't know. Good I do for I was giving it too long, so it was like... There's a brand new net. It is to all this if it's not working. While they struggle to fix Sunrise's new net, the pair trawlers continue fishing with the ocean dawn's here. <laughs> The small catch in Ian's net compounds their problems. They'll have to move to fresh grounds. By nightfall, they moved on. 
But John thinks he may have cracked the problem with the new net. She could deep with her balls on her net with more flotation than normal balls. So we're going to change it. Check sort it out. Don't play the well. The success of the whole trip rests upon one £20,000 net. But this investment is a drop in the ocean compared to the money being spent on the latest boat to join Peter Head's fishing fleet. At 1,000 tons and 40 meters in length, the Viking Monarch will be the largest whitefish trawler in the UK. The man with the ambition and deep pockets to get her fishing is skipper Jason Schofield. Um, well, it's looking good now. <laughs> it's, uh, it's taking some time, but it's looking good now. Right, it'll be a bit nerve wracking the first trip. I should have every angle covered. There shouldn't be any unforeseen disaster. But the boat is no stranger to unforeseen disaster. Before this refit, she was an Irish Atlantic trawler called the Solstice. One of her crew was killed at sea in a winch accident, and then three years ago, she went bust. Now renamed the Viking Monarch, Jason hopes he can change her luck. There was a horseshoe on this boat before, which was removed. Uh, um, there have been one or two accidents about this boat in the past, you know, and, and been a fatality, so really, um, it's the start of a new era, era for this boat, so we're going to uh, put our own horseshoes on and take our own luck from board, so every little thing helps. A new vessel of this kind would cost Jason's family at least five million pounds. But they've got this boat at a knockdown price, even if the refit cost another half a million. To fill her fuel tanks for the first time comes to £50,000. To get the boat fishing again, Jason's headhunted one of the UK's most successful large trawler skippers, Yorkshireman John Musgrave. It's a large substantial amount of money that you've got to fork out before you get any return. So, yeah, we've got to get down there and get some fishing. Her crew has been hand-picked from other boats, but it's the first time they've worked together as a team on a trawler this size. They're all strange, you know, it's a strange game, stand drag it to Fishing on this scale brings huge rewards, but can be extremely dangerous. Everything on this boat's really powerful, you know, and gear's very heavy, and everybody's just got to keep their wits about them. The first few days of this trip will be spent practicing shooting and hauling the gear. With Jason in the wheelhouse and John on deck, the two skippers try to knock into shape an unfamiliar boat and unfamiliar crew. Well, that boat's all right. Will a coat of paint, a new name, and a fresh start be enough to change Viking Monarch's luck? It's gonna break the wire. <laughs> The trawlers are also desperate for a change in fortune. They're about to find out if all John's tinkering with the new net will bring them their first decent haul. That's the least of the There may be half a ton of fish in the cod end, but it's not what they are hoping for. The cod is just rubbish. Again, too much small fish, not a good quality. Hard break it to say that. Well, but there's some compensation. The fish may be small, but at least they've got the net working. And we think we've a problem solved with net, so it's good. And as fish to see, we just gonna find it this week. <laughs> the pairs shoot their net again. Now all the skippers have to do 
Let's find the fish. It's getting serious. A lot of days out of the harbour now and I've no fish aboard the boat. Well, 12 men to pay as well. Drift families to keep. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. We'll get some fish. Have we done catch fish? Has <laughs> bank managers to pay? <laughs> Fuel to pay, it's a fortune. Jeepers. The Viking Monarch, the UK's largest whitefish trawler, is also struggling to change her luck. She's been at sea for three days and has hit a serious snag. Bloody hell. We're just hauling up to get the net clear. Her brand new net has just been ripped apart by rocks on the seabed. Net may be damaged. The net's torn to shreds. Bad news for the crew who will have to mend it by hand. Oh well, no, we no sleep tonight. Terrible! Like kindergarten cop. Kindergarten fishing. Very, very poor. Aye, uh, this is getting worse and worse. Yeah. A word of the tip. Shambles. Yeah. The Viking monarch is yet to shake her jinxed reputation. Every boat has her own character. And on the arcane, veteran skipper Charlie McBride knows precisely why boats are always female. People sometimes ask why you refer to a ship as a she or a her. A few reasons springs to mind. One is a ship like a woman, it's not the initial acquisition or acquiring of them, although that can be costly too, but it's the upkeep of the high maintenance of them after that. Another one is just like this ship now, it's just had a good slap of paint fired around her. It looks pretty for a while once the paint wears off and starting to show their age a bit there, a bit rougher looking. And uh, quite often it takes a strong hand at the helm to steer them in the right direction. Today's a special day on the Arcane. Charlie's prepared a surprise for Keith, the oldest member of his crew. Lovingly wrapped in newspaper and gaffer tape, the crew have bought Keith something more important than food, money and sleep. There you are. 200 of his favourite cigarettes. Another good cough. <laughs> Thanks, Lana. Many more of them, son. I hope so. Happy birthday, Keith. All the best, man. I spent a lot of birthdays at sea. Happy birthday. 16th, the 21st, the 18th. Your 60th. Your 60th. <laughs> and I'm silly. Yeah? I'm going to lie something nearly, I think. <laughs> Charlie's dodged the cod for the time being, but the net's caught more unwanted species. Gannets. Gannets are dead and dead in the water after this. side of the North Sea, just when the Viking Monarch's crew could do with some plain sailing, they're hit by a gale. Well, I can look at the gale, it's been near the wind, it's just howling now. I'd say it's probably got up to about 50 miles an hour now. Not stopping us just yet, but uh, it's uh, pretty nasty up there just now. Force and hands anyway, you know, then uh, it makes it quite more difficult for the crew and too dangerous, really. As conditions deteriorate, the Viking monarch gets her first decent haul. Dear, oh dear. 
There's two tons of fish rolling around in London. Somebody's going to get out doing this. Sick. We're losing control. Something about like that in bad luck, somebody's going to get out. Well, she's got the hollow up, so it goes in the hatch. Jesus. What a performance. The Viking monarchs catching fish. Despite the conditions, they keep fishing through the night. Half the size of the Viking monarch, the pair trawlers are also struggling to haul in force 10 conditions. of the two boats brings a host of dangers. This is what it was, Dave. You both boats are touched each side of the net. You can't have it over the same. So you just need to be a bit more careful. Spot with the gear. That's poor up with it, like. You don't want to be touching the rail against anyway, like. <laughs> to get the net in, the hopper is virtually empty. Catch me at the juke. As night falls, the weather gets even worse. The pair team are finding it impossible to find the fish, let alone catch them. I've never seen it like this. I've never had a start like this. this is... <laughs> She was trying to get better. The better get better. Oh, me, 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 me. In stark contrast to the pairs, the Viking monarch seems to have shaken off her bad luck. The halls just keep getting bigger. Jason's first trip target of 1400 boxes is beginning to look realistic. This is now we're just coming up for 700. We've not been out a week yet, so hopefully we can put another 700 onto that, but I think that might be too optimistic. We'll see. But Jason soon has cause to celebrate. The next haul is his biggest yet. There's five tons of fish in the hopper. All hands are needed to process the catch. A nice, a nice mix of all the well. That's a large, large collie. That's a medium haddock, a good, beautiful medium haddock, you know? Plenty like of haddocks in the sea. And uh, they should put fetch a premium price. We can have another two days now with that today. We should be not far off the hook, hopefully. The fish are mounting up in the hold, and the crew won't be going home in the hand. The pair trawlers are not so fortunate. The storms have forced them to seek the nearest shelter, a 60-mile steam through the Norwegian fjords to the port of Bergen. Cheers, Get a wee bit of peace in here. Save some fuel for a day. Go out tomorrow again. For the younger members of the crew, it's a new experience. Start, yeah. Look, we've been doing that for something different. Oh, look at that. The two crews decide to make the best of a bad job and head into town. 
Skipper Ian takes the crew for a morale-raising pint, but no one is keen to buy the first round. Eight pounds for fair pint. How much have we spent in the night? We should chip out the money and then draw straws. At least one man can get drunk and <laughs> throw a sleep easy the night. Get him a cruise. Can be very fresh tomorrow morning. <laughs> but John Stephen is in no mood for a run ashore. It's a happier ending for the Viking monarch. If the success of her first trip is anything to go by, the UK's biggest whitefish trawler has buried her troubled past. Ah, it's good. Great, yeah. It'll be nice when we get this fish landed tonight and get a few hours on dead. Because I think put the ship through the purses with a letter. Yeah. The crew handled it well, the ship handled it well. So, relieved that we've got a trip in on that. Everything went all right. And, yeah, I'm pleased. The Viking Monarch landed nearly 100 tons of fish and sold them for £80,000. A handsome catch for her first 10 day trip. Atlantic, the arcane is enjoying perfect fishing conditions, and there's a surprise waiting in the cod end. A rare deep water skate. That's our big blue. We've got the commercial value, so we'll throw over the rail the next bit of the night. The skate weighs 60 kilos, but there's no market for it. But there's no way they'll be throwing away the rest of the catch. Makes a high five fish. That's what we're doing for. It's an elusive flatfish called Megram, hardly eaten in Britain, but it fetches a great price with the French and Spanish buyers. They're worth finding. One fifty to two fifty, three hundred days, three hundred pound of bucks. If you get three or four of them a whole of separate holes a day, you start yarning up. After eight days at sea, the arcane is landing her catch. They'll earn just enough from this trip to keep their creditors at bay. We're not going to end because of our business. We're fighters. Fishermen. Fishermen are fighters. A great motto it says, never despairing, and that's us. We don't despair, we keep at it. We'll be here in ten years' time. I might not be, but the sun will, and the bright still be fishing. Call Billy. Next time on Trollerman, drama on the high seas. John Buchan goes head to head with a Spanish trawler in Scottish waters. So, Brad Lord Buchan, you are bored. A life song will shoot my creeper, and I will throw a line across every net you off. And the pair team face a new crisis. Yeah, Covey Dickens, never seen a clock like this, never. Stop, stop.